see if that's uh I was trying to work that out. I don't Boom. Hello. <laughs> okay, so here we go. That is us ready to roll, and we need some music. Da, 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 da. Boom. Menacing. <laughs> oh, Siren's get mixed. All right. So let's get you all caught up. It's been two weeks because we were busy dealing with the spirits of our ancestors in the real world with Obon over here in Japan. Um, let's go back to the uh, Barovian spiritual <laughs> happenings. Um, so, last time, um, you travelled back with Ismark, the lesser, to his house and met his poor sister, um, Irina, and you heard how their house was being attacked and, um, sorry, just a moment. Michael, what are you doing? What have I done? Your... What hasn't he done, guys? Strangely shifted out of your frame. Get back in your frame. Okay. No. Yes, back with you. Back frame. in your box. Okay. So, I. Sorry, I'm just gonna let. Sorry, let's get chill out a little bit. Because it's. Calm down, calm down. It's okay, it's okay. Right, You're okay. Not my real <laughs> oh, but can I be? Hey, so you went back and you heard about how these various undead creatures had been attacking the house until finally, no longer able to cope with the stress of the whole thing, the previous burgomaster had a heart attack and died. And his poor children were left with him in a homemade coffin and the parlor floor 
with wilting flowers as they were unable to get anyone to come and help them carry him to the church. In walked the pallbearers. <laughs> As we are calling ourselves, is it is this sticking? Is this sticking? Yes, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> and um, you. I've got it written in caps on my book, so it must. Be. <laughs> it must be. That's, yeah, that's, that's a canon now then. And you donned your white gloves and sunglasses and danced through the streets in the most memeable fashion possible, and carried the poor burgomaster to towards his final resting place the church of the village of Barovia. But when you arrived... Everything was normal and fine. <laughs> yep. That was the big shot. Yeah. You found a church in disarray. Destroyed pews thrown about the place. Holes in the roof. And the priest, Father Donovich, feverishly praying at the altar to the Raven Queen. Not praying. He was. Oh, no. In a church of all things. Oh, goodness me. And. Never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> you were all alarmed and concerned by the seeming cries for help that were emanating from the basement of the church. Cries of, Father, I'm hungry as they emanated up through the floorboards and stones of the building. Confronting the priest, he told you, after being convinced by his fellow follower of the Mother of Ravens, also known as the Raven Queen, to tell you what was going on, that a mad wizard had come into the village of Barovia and convinced the priest's son, along with lots of other young members of the community to go up to the castle Castle Ravenloft and confront the devil himself and from all reports that went great the wizard awful, awful. was defeated and mm -hmm. cast down as were so many of the members of that group but Father Donovich's son came back to him safely returning home with a slight change in that he had been changed into a vampire spawn. Father Donovich managed to overcome him and trap him in the undercroft and then padlock the door shut and has left him there for what seems like three months he said, without feeding him, as the son cries out, Father, I'm hungry. You now realize it was a different father that he was calling to. You left the Burgomaster's body with the priest to be prepared for the funeral in the morning and traveled back to the Burgomaster's house with his son, the new Burgomaster, aiming to take a long rest so that you would be fresh and prepared as best you can to deal with the situation come the morning. Arriving back safely, Irina let you in, having confirmed it was you, and you were about to go to bed and take your rest when a banging at the door oh, yeah. called your attention as Mad Mary let herself in, barging past and pleading with the new burgomaster and any of you that would listen to please, please, please find my Gertrude, her poor daughter who has apparently disappeared and left her distraught and wailing into the night as you had heard after arriving in the village. Ismark accompanied her home and left you with Irina 
which was a bit of a roller coaster of uh, <laughs> a uh, relationship there. It was, it was hot and then cold and then hotter again and then colder again. And eventually, Ismark returned and you all went to bed for the evening, laying down your heads to trance, per trance to dream. <laughs> Incoming. A new player has approached. What? Sorry, it's, oh, it's, it's Colby. <laughs> I have done that to you before. I have done you to you before. Not right now. Yes, tonight, playing the part of Irina, we have. No. <laughs> John, sorry, really quickly, my Sirenscape hasn't been playing any music. Um, okay, um, it's just the intro spiel music at the moment, when it, it'll, it'll flip over in a second. Okay, I just, because I opened it after you started all the tracks. So uh, okay, yeah, it, I'll, I'll when, I, when, I start the, when I start the next thing, um, that will play for you. Now, three of you had a shared dream experience. One did not. Now, why could that have been? I blame Chris. He convinced me to buy a pie. That's right. I like that. What? How did... Oh yeah, that's completely <laughs> As you left the Blood on the Vine Tavern, you followed the lead of one of the drunk locals who stumbled over to a charming old woman pushing her wares through the night air, selling dream pies. I'm selling dream pies tonight through the village of Barovia. And Krig and Xenicus partook of this local delight. Krig seemingly unaffected had a normal night's sleep and shared the dream that the others saw but Xenicus perhaps due to his predisposition towards the pie as a foodstuff had a rather different experience our three friends that had the same experience were drawn to a crossroads where a gallows was waiting, but also a raven, which flew off down a side road towards a location called Sir Pool. Being drawn down the same road as the raven, you came across an encampment on the side of a watery pool, and you were taken into the main tent, wherein a cowled figure sat at a worn table, producing an even further worn and well-used set of cards, a Taroka deck. She drew a card, but seemingly thwarted by the distance between you, she only could see the mists, and she bade you all visit her as soon as possible that you might hear what the future has in store in this fair land of Barovia. Meanwhile, Xenicus had a different dream. Would you care to share with the group? Yeah, actually, um, it's started you it's you seem to get a, a close up on it's it's strange because it's clearly Xenicus and um, you can recognize the features but without the kind of like tattoos on the face uh, the kind of the coloring thing but it's definitely him it's, it's got the, the black hair but a lot younger a lot younger um, and it's you see him huddled up almost scared yeah he's almost scared huddled up in a like not sure what it is, something completely covering him, sh shaking and shivering. But as you kind of see, you kind of see around him, and all of a sudden an arm <coughs> comes around him, and you see this someone who looks very similar to him, a lot older. Um, uh, this 
kind of another male figure just gives him a kind of hug and kind of brings him in close and to his side there's another uh, younger uh, girl and um, bright eyes and kind of looking around very very small like almost a toddler kind of huddled in as well and that um, kind of just kind of lying next to them but not like kind of acting cool as another elder figure you guess that they're clearly all siblings and they suddenly all jump back as there's a, as if some, something suddenly just happened and you it's as if the kind of the dream turns and you see that there's two there's well, one very animated strikingly blonde figure um throwing out magic um and suddenly like trolls are attacking each other and images are appearing and clearly telling a story of some sort as the family are huddled around the fireplace um, clearly in the, the dead of winter just at home snuggled up listening to stories of um, his uh, mother and father's exploits the mother clearly trying to tell a great story and constantly being interrupted by the father going yeah yeah but 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 yeah and, and remember 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 constantly trying to get in on it but clearly doesn't have the flavor for storytelling that mother does and it's it just kind of kind of turns back on him as he's uh, huddled completely surrounded by his family and enthralled by the stories that are being told. Oh, I don't see any of that because it's the end of But that's still really cute. Well, you wouldn't have seen his. Yeah, you wouldn't have seen mine. <laughs> yes, unfortunately. Okay, thank you very much. Now, all of you awaken from your night's rest. You may all have the benefits of a long rest. Yeah. But Xenicus, oh. you wake craving that warm, happy feeling that you experienced in your dream. And you just know it was thanks to the pie, as the old woman said, dream pies. It was thanks to her that you experienced such a wonderful escape from all of this desperate, dreary, threatening landscape that surrounds you and this predicament you found yourself in. If, if only... If only you could get another. We find ourselves having a simple yet warming breakfast around the table of the Burgomaster's dining room with Xenicus picking rather disconsolately at his food. Asara walks into the dining room looking intriguedly at a crumpled up piece of paper which Asara you saw sticking out from the mattress under the mattress of the bed that Krig had been sleeping in you saw the corner of it and tugged it out yes and as you tugged it out you saw that it was a drawing, clearly a children's drawing. And in the drawing was depicted a bald-headed, scowling man with his left arm, a twisted, demonic limb coated with jagged scales. <laughs> and as you come in you see the others already there um, and Ismark and Irina bringing out food um, dressed very smartly knowing that they are headed to a formal if somber occasion
still can't hear the music. Mm, I haven't. Sorry, I haven't changed it. Let me. Oh, okay. Sorry. It's okay. Let me let me fade that in and out for you. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> Much better. Cats. Yeah. Music. Birthday yeah. cat. <laughs> Birthday cat. Oh. She's looking at you. <laughs> okay. Um. So, yes. I would like to look at everybody around the table, and then I'll just say, when you woke up this morning, how were your windows looking? Um. Like windows. Boarded up? Mm. I'll kind of think point at uh, Xenicus. Like affirmedly, like because I'm stuffing food in my face. Interesting. I think somebody tried to break into my room yesterday. What? Wait, what? Mm. Uh, which Irina's head snaps around. She's like, "What did you say? What? What are you somebody talking about?" To, somebody tried to break into the house yesterday. What? One of the boards was pulled off my window. But how? Did you... Did you invite anyone in? No. She, you can see she relaxes at that. Okay. But I have things that don't belong to me. Would that be enough for an invite? What, what do you mean? I gesture at the clothes I'm wearing. Oh. oh of course. Um, what, what is it with those clothes? They aren't mine, I found them in a tree. It's just best not to say things like that. We had that discussion. Ismark comes over and he's like, found them in a tree? Yes. How? How did? How, in what state did you find them? Mm, they seemed pretty reasonably well made, folded up. Folded like, up? Rigged, and? Like, Full of mouth full of or beak full of food is like they were like a baby swaddled. <laughs> Would you say they were wrapped to protect them from the weather? Certainly. You would do well not to disturb things that you find in the forest. Krieg, I'm sorry if I've ever caused you any disturbances. We're good. He often goes into the forest. <laughs> this land is beset by many creatures, all manner of dangers. Amongst them are were creatures. I thought as much that these would belong to something like that, a lichen. I haven't heard tell of activity around these parts, but further off to the west, there is talk of. He kind of steals himself. Werewolves. Well, this mark. Rest assured, if I see a wolf or a person in the nude, I will walk the other direction. Wise decision on both counts, I'm sure. Um, please be careful, my friends. I, I, I've only just met you, and I was hoping to keep your acquaintance for longer than a day. Not just because I want you to help Irina. It is so nice to see other people and it brings, dare I say, hope. I'm gonna hold out the picture I found and be like, what's this? Yeah, what, what, what is that? What, what did you find? Um, this was under Craig's bed. 
And Irina looks Ooh, over and she's like, as an artist. Huh. I. I think I must have drawn that uh, many years ago. You and uh, Craig were in my childhood room. What is it exactly? I, I don't know. Let, let me see. Let me see. What, what on earth could I have been thinking? Maybe I had a nightmare or something. Mm. Look at this, its arm. What's with its arm? From my experience, dreams and nightmares, they're all just visions given to us by a higher power. Intriguing. What would uh, disturb the dreams of an innocent young girl with visions such as this? And to talk to your guidance people. Wait, I... Uh, yeah, I... <clears throat> More formal than boyfriend, so... She's trying. Asara's <laughs> trying. Danta seems taken aback. She's like... <clears throat> any ideas I mean I just don't I, look here's the thing dream interpretation was never really my forte anyone at all anything oh shit it closed oh oops like leave us alone <laughs> <laughs> yeah they've closed yeah. from the inside like yeah, pol oh, poltergeist just his like... little hand <laughs> too early in the morning for this <laughs> bishop would would the raven queen bring any any dreams like this or a deity. Um, as I have counselled you before, mm -hmm. the dreams that we have here in our mortal realms are often visited mm -hmm. if we keep the faith and seek the counsel and guidance of our deities. <laughs> securely fastened securely fastened and you unless do you have anything to say or are we, we okay to move on I was just gonna say if you keep any deities perhaps they visited you or if any deities or patrons wanted to visit you they could certainly infiltrate well <laughs> sounds awfully dramatic I think it was just a just a young girl's dream a nightmare, I'd wager. My dad used to tell me that uh, bad dreams came from brain fungus, so I, I, I don't know. I, <clears throat> I don't know anything. I've never heard of such a thing. Uh, hopefully it uh, does not exist in Barovia. All right. Can I keep this? The drink? Ah, uh, yes, of course. And Irina goes over to Ismark and she's like, Now, brother, please see that our father finds his final rest. And he's like, And you also see that you are not disturbed. She's like, yes, I know, I know. I'll stay away from the windows and doors until you're back. Be careful. And will you be back as quickly as possible? I will, I will. And this mark turns to you all. Shall we? Mm. Are we all? I think I'll keep your sister company. But 
That's not right. Actually, it was like, and he'll, like, kind of, uh, can we? Can is Mark, is Mark actually, yeah, he, like, what goes out and um, goes to start getting his things together? Yes. Takes his hands, like, um, remember the thing downstairs problem we were going to deal with? And you see her like look off like past past the case like oh like too many things <laughs> like <laughs> imagine what it's like for the DM yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, <that's true. laughs> uh, yeah all right Stay, and she's gonna turn. She's gonna be like, "No, really, stay away from the windows and the doors." Serena. I will. And uh, whilst the devil cannot come in, if anything of his, any beast of his should, and she just slashes across with that sword, and it rings through the air, clearly very sharp. Would it not be better to tie her down? She's going to look at Arena and look at Vanta and be like, you want to try that? Like, that's yeah. her face. Like, um... I was just about to say, I'd like to see you try. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's okay. It's better coming from you. Just seems to have a sensible head. I think she would be able to take care of herself, especially with that sword arm. But her mind isn't entirely her own. Irina, still standing right there, is like, she'll be fine, I'm sure. Now, you shouldn't keep Father Donovich waiting. Do you mean it's Mark? Sorry. No. Irina says that about herself. Yep. Because you're all re- referring to her in the third person when she's right there, so she was taking, oh. she was throwing it back in your face. Well, regardless, it was just a thought. Hmm. Well, regardless, thank you for accompanying Ismak. He shouldn't do this alone. Agreed. And, like, Craig will put his bow, like, on his back and <laughs> start heading out. Okay. And Ismark's at the door and he nods and opens it up and you step out into the cold, misty morning. What a lovely day. It, uh... It really is. We have some beautiful cloudscapes from time to time. <laughs> um, and uh, Ismark pulls up his collar and shoulders into the rain and splashes down the path and heads north across the village. Um, do, 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 does the pie vendor usually come out this early? It's still a little peckish. Um, is Mark? You sent to his Mark? Yeah. He's like, um, I've never, never seen her come by more than once a ten day or so. Once a ten? Oh, that's very, very unfortunate. <laughs> um, are you sure? Um, yes, quite. Seems like a bad business plan. Why wouldn't you come uh, more often? You get more sales. It's not for me to ask. The wouldn't be special, Zenicus. Let's go. (laughs) They were special. So special. Now. Yeah, they were. They were incredible. (laughs) Ismark leads you through the streets. And I think... You see a villager or two, again, bundled against the rain. 
trudging down the street a, a few junctions over but you're not uh, you don't cross paths with anyone and you all make your way and arrive at the church let me put you over there Make my way downtown, walking <laughs> and passing all around. Ba In uh, in Barovia, it's instead of a piano, it's a harpsichord. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in minor key. <laughs> How does that even sound? Okay. How are we doing? Do we all have? Um, do we all have visual? Yeah. It's problem sorted from last week then. Now you arrive at the church and Father Donovich greets you and you help him carry the Burgomaster's body in its coffin. Ignoring the cries from the basement at the moment. And actually, on the way over, Ismark had said, once the ceremony is complete, he would keep Father Donovich at the crypt, the family crypt, and have him console him and talk of their memories of their, of his father whilst you left them in privacy out of respect for Ismark's situation and made your way onto other things now you carry the coffin in your best pallbearer manner around the, out the exterior of the church and again you find yourselves in that graveyard that you saw as you approached huddled up against the pillar rock that stretches up and up to the castle looming above the village at the far side of the graveyard with its various crypts and stones and unmarked graves. There is a dilapidated, sodden-looking wooden fence, and beyond that, the trees of the ever-present forest, arrayed in audience of the ceremony to come between the edge of the graveyard and the pillar stone as the mist weaves its way between the trunks and the gravestones alike. Father Donovich, after you've placed the coffin within the family crypt, which is the one there, leads an archaic Vanta, but familiar funeral rite of the Raven Queen but you do notice he pays extra attention and puts even more emphasis on the parts of the ceremony that talk about the soul passing over and going where they should I mean of course it is a key part of the Raven Queen's doctrine that all the souls go where they should and pass on to their afterlives but Father Donovich seems to talk of it more so than any normal ceremony would even in this archaic form now let me get him where is he here we go All of you are huddled 
in the rain. What, what are you doing? Are, are you, are you like heads bowed, or are you, you know, keeping an eye out around, or you know, how how are you how are you comporting yourselves in this situation? Like, I heard that howling. Zinnikas is definitely keeping an eye out for what's going on around him. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm like respectful, but um... yeah, just just keeping an eye around. Okay. Craig has got uh, like wings out, like umbrellas over the rest of the party. <laughs> like an angel of death. No, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes. <laughs> Smack you in the face. Like, ah, damn. Like, damn it. <laughs> Here, let's put you. Um, Emma, you are muted. Let's put you between there. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, I was wondering why everyone kept talking with me. I was about to be like, what the heck, guys? Uh, no. <laughs> it's you, it's not us, it's you! No, um, no, I just was saying that I'm kneeling at the side of the grave. Okay. Um, staring at Father Donovich with unblinking wide eyes, just like... Let's try that then. How's that? Mm -hmm. Being normal. <laughs> Being very normal. I see. Thank you. Classic Vance. <laughs> It's all about the vans. <laughs> okay. Some people have banter. You guys got. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to finish the joke. <laughs> now, the ceremony goes on for a while, and nothing particularly catches your attention. Although those of you who are paying attention and being observant do occasionally still hear the cries of um, the afflicted son within poor Doru trapped as he is beneath the church hungering hungering as keenly and strongly as Xenicus is himself for those pies Oh, you find your mind during the ceremony drifting back to that fireside storytelling session and the thought of just one of those little palm-sized one bite mouthful delicious meat pies we just solve all of our problems I don't see what the problem is don't worry you know that you'll be on the road soon with Irina and hopefully passing by the base of their operations, this windmill that Ismark spoke of. Yeah, I, that's the main goal. Like, <laughs> I see. So, as the ceremony progresses, you feel the mist coming in even closer and thicker around the proceedings. And you find yourselves looking over your shoulders as this mist clings ever closer to the gravestones and buttresses of the church. It's then that Asara and Xenicus and pro I think Krig too as you're looking around and keeping an eye open at one point the mists swirl and you can see a figure standing standing behind the cemetery fence his features shrouded in the mist they appear to be a tall man clad all in black with their head bowed like vantas as if they are also in prayer we don't recognize the figure there. Oh, we don't? 
from where you are, you're quite far away, you can't. Asara, one more thing. No. You suddenly get a very unpleasant sensation. In the crypts beneath Death House. <laughs> no. In the crypts beneath Death House, you found a great number of trinkets, did you not? So many things I found. One of them is closer at hand than the others, am I right? What's on your wrist? A direwolf tongue. Leather. Leather. A leather cuff with slight magical properties, it seemed, made from the cured tongue of what could have only been a direwolf from the size. Although... It's, it's a big bangle. I say cured. I say leather. Oh my God. Oh my God. The unpleasant sensation I was mentioning is you suddenly become aware of the cuff returning to its original musculature oh my God. texture and moisture. It hasn't moved, and it hasn't come undone, but the cuff oh. around your wrist is a flesh... I was going to say unblood, but there is, there's no blood coming out. There is a soft direwolf tongue with its little taste buds rasping against the inside of your wrist. Ah. Uh. Nope. Hey, John, can I ask you a question? Yes. Is this an open oh. casket situation? Um, yes, let's say so. Yes. How's he looking down there? Same. Okay, I'm gonna start <laughs> keeping an eye on him. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. Yeah. He's okay. Just keeping an eye. I'm gonna look down at my wrist and go, oh. like, not, not shocked, not horrified, just like, yeah. oh. and then. <laughs> This always happens to me. <laughs> and then I'm gonna attempt to take it off? Um, certainly. Yep, you can unfasten it. Yep, I'm gonna unfasten it. Okay. And I'm gonna... <laughs> it... I can wrap it in. Softly, loosely flaps open. <laughs> like a lolling good boy's tongue. <laughs> oh, that's sweet and awful. <laughs> Oh Happy um, birthday! <laughs> um, I'm gonna, yep, and you're gonna put it away. Yeah, I'm gonna put it away, but I'm gonna okay. try and see if I have something to like. Can I have an old shirt? In theory. Um, yeah, you can have spare, spare, spare garments. Yeah. I'm gonna have a spare shirt, and I'm just gonna like burrito wrap it, <laughs> and then put it in. Gotcha. Um, as an aside, while, like, I, Krig, obviously, like, standing over everyone would notice Asara taking off the, the this bangle. Sure. And, like, when it kind of, like, goes limp like that, yep. Krig has to kind of, like, like, what I'm getting at is it looks like a really big, fat earthworm. <laughs> and, uh, like, to resist the temptation to just peck at it. <laughs> Okay, can I get that a? Do, do I? Do we need to? Do we need a save throw? Saving throw here? <laughs> no, 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 no. The 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 solemn solemnity of the situation um, lends a a, a a an iron will to your uh, instincts. <laughs> His eyes get really chicken like, and then he like kind of like. <clears throat> <laughs> well done. Yes, well resisted. Well resisted. Okay, now. And slowly walk towards the figure and just because then like it seems like this person's here to pay respects i'm guessing but at the same time he's still suspicious and wants to make sure that if anything is going down he's between 
like them and like the uh, like Father Donovich and such. Um, then let me show you where they are so you can get an idea. In that direction, further away than that. Sorry, limitations of the map. Slowly and not threateningly moving towards them, but like yes, got it definitely. As you draw closer, as you draw closer, they don't raise their head. They still keep their head respectfully bowed, but you notice more detail as you get further into the mist towards them and you see a certain drawn out pointedness to the ears and a very deathly pale pallor to the skin not like any elf you've seen. But perhaps like some elves you've heard of. A certain type of elf that doesn't come to the surface too often. You've never seen a dusk elf. Also known on the Sword Coast as a drow. But everything you've heard, everything you've been told, certainly seems that's what this figure must be. And it is not the figure you had met before. Am I close enough that, like, like a. Like because he, he wouldn't want to like speak outwardly because there's a ceremony and such going on. It's the kind of, you know, like that kind of funeral situation where you kind of get close enough to whisper to someone. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm kind of going close enough to that, but he, he's keeping an eye behind him just to make sure that like he knows that Crick and Asara has got his back and everything goes to shit. But, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely watching. Are you, all, are you all just walking away from the ceremony? This guy, this guy's like 80 feet away or so. Like uh, uh, behind the fence outside the graveyard. Yeah, I'm still shielding people from the rain. I'm, like, walking a good... Like, I'm gonna start walking, like, when Xenicus gets far enough away that I'm like, oh yeah, he's he's committed. He's going up to the guy. I'm gonna start, like... Are we doing this? Yeah, what's this? happening? I'm gonna be 25 feet behind. Like, uh -huh. not... I'm gonna be pretty far behind to, like, give... I don't want to... I'm like, we're not splitting up. I'm just the middleman now. <laughs> kind of deal. Okay. Because like, Zedekus is thinking, if this guy is here to pay respect, then this is a potential ally. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So, as you make your way over, how close do you get? Give me, give me, give me feet here, Zedekus. Like, he would, first he would get, like, about 20 feet and then kind of stand and kind of that kind of look of, like, have they noticed me yet uh -huh. kind of situation and then, like, to see if there's any reaction or change in their demeanor. Okay. Gimme, gimme, feet. As you do, I know. you hear... A number of utterances that could only come from curled lips and bared fangs. And the undergrowth to either side of this figure parts as a number of wolves. Large, but not dire. Oh, this seems pretty dire to me. With their... <laughs> yeah. With their black fur dripping in the rain as they shoulder their way through the undergrowth and stand at the man's side, glaring at you. 
quick question to the end before Seneca's reacts. Yes. Like, as far as I, the player, am aware, werewolves and vampires don't generally get on. It, but I heard, like, it kind of made it sound that, like, Strad had, like, I, I think someone mentioned that Strad had used wolves yes. before. Yes. So I just wanted to check that that's how it is here, that's maybe not how it is other places, but that, it seems to be that the wolves are under you, his command. You heard that, yes, okay. Strad, Strad has dominion over the wolves of this land. Yeah. Yes. Thought so. Just double checking and that. And you heard bats as well was another one that was yeah. mentioned. But not werewolves. Well, yeah. oh, okay. They have not been oh. talked about in the same context yet. Cool, cool. That's because, like, me as the player, I think usually werewolves and vampires are kind of at odds with each other. So I was like. We're not playing Twilight. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> sparkle, sparkle, um, sparkle. But. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah I, okay so Zeneca sees like <laughs> no don't lose don't lose don't lose, you, don't lose it um right, so like they're coming out and like he see, describe what happened to him again did he like kind of back and he just no Has, reaction hasn't anymore. reacted at all he's head bowed respectful and seemingly in prayer from what I know about well, Zeneca is going to try and be a bit braver than he necessarily will be feeling and mm -hmm. knows that wolves generally react to alphas mm -hmm. the, the pack leader and will keep walking forward as if like and staring them down oh okay God. do i see the wolves yeah yeah you're as i said you're right behind him and we're looking in the right same direction um staring. and asara you see something very interesting they're mauling me <laughs> Zenicus. I said no. Interesting to her, not interesting to me. <laughs> you, you see Zenicus kind of set his shoulders almost, and and like with a certain determination about him that you've you haven't really seen before, and no more so as you know, an increased in number. Yeah, and. The strangest thing happens. The wolves lower themselves onto the ground, the looking up at Zenicus. And as he takes a further step forward, they melt back into the forest and disappear. The last one. And Tripping over itself to do so. Oh my god. I, I was like, kind of like, hey, faster <laughs> to close the gap. And then when I saw this, I was, I like, slow down and I'm, I'm like, as to be like, oh, nope, nothing, didn't see nothing, didn't, la la la. Inside Zenicus is like, outside Zenicus is just continuing the stoic walk forward. <laughs> How close are you now? I think it's the the ten like that ten extra feet that he goes and because ten so, feet's close enough that he can converse with the person without like interrupting. Anything. So you're ten feet from him. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm ten feet behind that. <laughs> I just had to change something. Oh no. Uh -uh. Zenicus. Without anything changing, as you step within ten feet of this figure, who doesn't move, head bowed as if in prayer, your mind is suddenly filled with tens? No. Hundreds. No, it must be thousands of wailing despairing, lamenting voices. Like, is it like an like, does it feel like it's an attack or is it just like I'm hearing me? You can hear them and it's, it feels, it feels almost like there's almost something to the air. It's, it's, it feels like it's almost swirling around this figure. I think you would definitely kind of like stumble for a second at just like that sudden like wave of like all that. Um, 
Is that you? Doing that? The figure slowly raises his head. And let me bring him up for you all to have a good look at here. I'm ready to sit for this draft. <laughs> oh my gosh. Iconic. <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> Hell yeah. And he raises his head. And he says... My master sends his condolences to the bereaved family on the passing of the Bergamaster. And he asks that you would pass this. And he holds out a letter folded parchment sealed with red wax please make sure that the deceased's daughter Irina gets this I snatch it <laughs> not like a it's not like a polite taking of it it's kind of as if like a how d very dare you be here type situation. Again, my deepest condolences. And he steps back and he raises a hand. And as he does so, hands going to the weapon. The mist to his right swirls and congeals and forms up into the shape of a storm grey horse which he deftly swings up onto the back of and gallops off to the west don't like him but I like his style <laughs> As this happens, I definitely, like, run up to Zen- Like, I close the ten feet very quickly, and I'm like, You have many drow friends? Looking up at the- <laughs> Up the way. Can we, do we still hear, like, the wailing, or is that gone? It's gone. As soon as he moves away, yeah. As soon as, he, as soon as he moves more than ten feet away, it disappears. When it happened, he was just like, I want a pie, I want a pie, I want a pie. <laughs> <laughs> and, Asara, you did not hear it. You did not get within range before he gallops away. If I could see his details, right? You saw him. Yeah, you saw his face. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Just uh, another pawn of the the land. They gave their condolences. That's the, his damn fault. So, and this, he kind of like shows it to um, Asara. Some letter for Irina. Oh, well, we're gonna open that. Definitely. With the uh, brothers knowing, or without? Without. Open it. Let's be two girls in a locker room. Like, open it. Now, the wax, does it just look like a normal... What? What is the seal on the wax? It is a raven. Um... I have the seal to show you, but not without showing you the letter as well. So, ah, okay. <laughs> I said, there's no conceivable situation where they see the seal without seeing the contents of the letter, so it's on the same document. <laughs> In my head, we both look up at the same time and go, Vanta, and then start marching. That's, that's exactly what I was saying. I was like, I don't want to mess with the Raven Queen. This is, this is a Raven Queen thingy. <laughs> but, I'm like, like he almost he'll... leaning into the casket now, just like... Don't get up. Don't you become a tongue. Don't you become a tongue. Yep, what? exactly. I'm like willing you to stay dead. <laughs> but yeah, he puts the the kind of the letter inside his kind of circle. Okay. And kind of heads back with us. Uh... As you come back, you see Vanta rise from the ground. 
from the grave. From the grave. From the, <laughs> from behind a gravestone. Yeah, it's just, it's just like <laughs> from your point of view. <laughs> and um, this apparition. And then he's like, oh no, it's Manto, it's okay. <laughs> and, uh, and then um, you see Ismark clasping Father Donovich's hand and thanking him for the service as it seems to have drawn to a close. And he turns to all of you. <sighs> My friends, thank you for being here with me, but if I might ask for a little oh. privacy? Of course. Um. Father Donovich, Wait. if I could have your counsel. I don't move. Back in a... ah, Isaac, give him a moment. Can I insight check him? Sure. Insight. My character sheet is reloading. It's stuck on the D and D Beyond logo. Insight is a seventeen. Okay. You ascertain that Ismark is doing exactly what he said he was going to do <laughs> on the way over which is distract the priest while you deal with a problem uh, uh, Emma forgot that <laughs> oh, oh my god it's okay <laughs> so like, why is everyone else so easily playing a role <laughs> like, you all make your way back round the dilapidated exterior of the church to the front, past the claw marks and blackened stonework from fire, back round to the front doors. You can you can take that stroll if you like. It is uh, off we go. The map is the map is your oyster. Off <laughs> to see the vampire. The wonderful vampire of Thoria. You can't go through the windows. You can see Aww. through them. <laughs> try. Don't. Um, sorry, John, the music stopped for me again. Oh, hmm. I just hit. Ow, I, I bang into a sorry. <laughs> it's just us through here now. Do, 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 do. Craig's going through I... the windows like a nutter. No, Somebody else is going through the here we go. How's that? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Got... What I like here. There you go. <laughs> All better. <laughs> As okay. Manta tries to go in first, Zenica definitely puts a hand on her shoulder. Zenica's like, definitely got in there first. I just think Emma was impatient. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, nope. As you come yeah. back inside, you see that same um, interior that you saw before with the uh, the smashed pews and everything there in disarray um, and those same four doors that you had seen before coming from any specific one it's coming up through the floor yeah I thought so so you're not sure we should check all of these doors just to make sure that if we release this there's no other exits we can trap it with only one way to go it'll have through us not anywhere else Let's all open the doors and everyone through one door. <laughs> I, I do insist on a Scooby Doo moment where you're all like coming in and out of the doors across the corridor. <laughs> <laughs> and then it is chasing us, we're chasing it. Absolutely. It's the only way to do it. <laughs> so. As Zenica says this, I'm going to be like, after you, just trying to choose a door. Zenica has chosen a door. Which one are you going to do first? That top right? Yeah. Okay. Let me get. Uh... That. What does get this one the first to go as well, like we did with the kids and uh, underneath the death house? Boom. There you are, sir. You open up that door and peek inside, and you see an old desk and chair standing against the south wall, a wooden holy symbol mounted above them, a raven. And a ten-foot-long iron rod attached to the north wall suggests that a tapestry once hung there, but the wall now stands bare. 
Against the far wall stands a wooden cabinet with four tall doors. What would you like to do? Does this look like it's been used recently? Yes. This Looks the... like an office. This is his office. That's boring. <laughs> Tara? Hi, Tara. And I'm going to open the door in front of me. Okie doke. There you go. Which door? As you open that top left door, you see a dirty room that contains a wooden bed with a straw-filled mattress, next to which rests a small table with an oil lamp burning brightly on the top. Mounted above the bed's headboard is a wooden raven-shaped holy symbol. Can I do an investigation check to make sure I don't miss um, any... Give me a perception check, please. Sure. After that, I've got a question. Fifteen. Fifteen? You would say that um, this is the priest's bedroom. It's dirty, but not through neglect. It has been used. And you don't find anything else, I'm afraid. Okay. I'll open the door in front of me. <laughs> Zenicus is calling to you. <laughs> oh, I thought he was. I thought that was as a. Oh, no, no. It's there. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Yes. The symbols of the Raven Queen. Mm -hmm. Does she. Or does they, do they. mind if they are used to send souls? To the Raven Queen, would it be offensive for us to take one to do their bidding? Well, I don't think so. If you Just, um, believe you can serve the Raven Queen, if you find a holy symbol that speaks to you and you wish to use I, it to well, further her cause. Well, you mentioned before that her cause was to send the souls that should be there to her. Then take it. Then that's what She's we're about to do. To I was thinking more about this. My... Yeah, okay. He's <laughs> <laughs> you... thinking more about like, this is a symbol, just stuff it and burn this vampire, but like, you... being all spiritual. Like, You're taking the one from the office? <laughs> Yeah, I guess he's gonna try and take that. Like a cross in front of like a, a vampire. That's what I was thinking. Room. Like, I wonder if ah! the cross can work with the rape, like shove a raven on it. Like, I think that'll be. F I think that when a Asa when not sorry when Vanta realizes that you, you you don't mean it in like a more spiritual sense, you just yeah. gonna go like she's gonna be like, huh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, but like he's like huh? consult the spirit box about the that later. Spiritual <laughs> thing. That's yeah, yep, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, that. Yeah. Cool. And just takes the one from the goes into the office. Stop talking. Takes the raven. And as you as you're like, you know, bottom lip out, thinking about this, Vanta, you you have some manly push on that door, swing it open, and you see that time and neglect have punched holes in the ceiling of this mouldy room, which contains a few broken roof shingles amid amid puddles of water. In one corner, set into the floor, is a heavy wooden trapdoor, held oh. shut with a chain and a padlock. The young man's screams of anguish can be heard more clearly through the door. I found him. It's in here. We should check that up, if just to be safe, if you don't creep. Everybody gets a door. Yup. <laughs> and Craig will, like, unceremoniously, like... Yank it open? Yeah. Okay. There you are, sir. You see um, that this 
dirty, lightless room contains a wooden bed with a straw-filled mattress again. Mounted above the bed's headboard is another wooden holy symbol. But this is clearly showing signs of not being used for a while. Is there anything under the bed? You have a look. You don't see anything. Yep, nothing in here. In we go. Okay. In we go. That door seems to be padlocked. It is. Maybe a key. Head back to the office and see if there's anything in the drawers of the okay. table. Give, give me a perception check. Come on, come on. Mm, that is a uh, 14? 14, okay. Um, in the desk, you find a few sheets of blank parchment with a couple of quill pens and some dried up jars of ink. You shift your attention to the cabinet on the east wall, but for their size, they contain very little. There's a tinderbox, a few boxes of candles, and two well-used books. Hymns to the Mother of Ravens and another book called The Blade of Truth. The uses of logic in the war against diabolist heresies as fought by the Ulmist Inquisition. <laughs> that is all. Zenekis remembering all the stories of his parents about how when they were looking through places, people mm -hmm. always hid keys and books. And take the, the set, that second book about the, about the <laughs> fighting heresy and opens the book hoping to find it like it cut out in the big key sitting in there. Yep. I'm afraid not. <laughs> ah, it opens the other book and tries. I'm afraid not. <laughs> Very dejectedly. <laughs> Puts the books back. I'm sorry. There's no key in here. Not even in the books. <laughs> he seems quite angry about that. Hmm. Craig is like visibly confused at that statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of brushes it off. Alright. I'd be like, alright, maybe we don't need a key and go attempt to pick the lock. Okay. Please give me a check for that. Yep. Where is it? I don't think that's right. Sorry, my beyond is being stupid. No worries. How do you do? No, I'm looking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've only picked one lock and I'm sorry. I'm hungry. Would it be under... I'm under features and traits. It's a, it's a um, sleight of hand. With your proficiency bonus, if you are using your thieves tools. Nice. Ha. Well, with both my plus four and my proficiency bonus, I got a nine. <laughs> okay. You work at this padlock for a while. I'm sorry, I said I pray for guidance. Okay. But my was muted, I forgot. <laughs> no worries. I, I did say it like just before she said what the number was, but no problem. that might That's have been fine. too late. Okay. No, no, give me that D4. Do I get it? D4? D4. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Not that much. It's better than nothing. <laughs> I got a one. No, <laughs> well, ten. Okay. Well, luckily, this roll was more of a 
time consumed rather than a whether it happens or not to roll. So it takes you quite a long time. And you're kind of start, starting to kind of like embarrassedly look over your shoulders at everyone like leaning up against the walls waiting patiently. Like nervously trying not to like stare. <laughs> Krieg, I think Krieg keeps, keeps pe- you know, peeking out the door, make sure that the, uh, the chat's still going on in the back. Um, and uh, eventually, after quite some time, there is a click. <laughs> Well done, that's fine. So, do you draw the train, the chain free? Um, before I do, I'm definitely gonna turn around and be like, at the ready. Then it is at the ready. <laughs> so, sword out, shield out. Okay. Ready to to put a shield over the hole if something tries to jump up. <laughs> no problem. And just like, <laughs> just, just a little. Yep. Okay. So yes, you remove the chain, and with a bit of a pull, because it's swollen shut with the water, a little, having been securely sealed for three months, you manage to wrench open this trap door. Do I see anything? Oh, good. I love that noise. <laughs> I don't have a noise. You do not. Now, directly beneath the trapdoor, you do see a little um, landing and then a flight of wooden steps leading down to the north. Who's going first? Who's going first? Zeneca. Okay. Let me uh, click. click. No, no, no. <laughs> Let me bring you over, Zeneca. If you go to the right. Yep, yeah, okay. Oh, lovely. Here. Ah! Hello. Wait, Hello, wait a moment, wait a moment. Yeah, just moving so you can put other people on. Yep. So you find yourself down in the church's undercroft which has rough-hewn walls and a floor made of damp clay and earth. Rotting wood pillars strain under the weight of the wooden ceiling, and candlelight from the chapel above slips through the cracks, allowing you to glimpse a gaunt shape in the far corner, which as players, (laughs) thanks to Michael, Justinianus, you have all seen before. (laughs) What? <laughs> just it's to, my boy. Just to anyone else who's watching, <laughs> this was chosen randomly as a piece of art by Michael for a one shot <laughs> for my birthday back in April. <laughs> not knowing at that point that we were going to be playing Curse of Strad, and not knowing that that was <laughs> this NPC. <laughs> it's my boy. There he is. <laughs> That's beautiful. Does it, 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 it? Does the figure look like it's chained up or something? Here, or here's, it, here's, here's, the the full, here's the full picture. <laughs> oh, let me... Oh. Uh, lovely. I hate... Aw, oh, Doru! Doru! Adorable. Oh my <laughs> god. Sorry. He looks like... Right. This might be a bit of an obscure reference. <laughs> It's gonna be because it's not really a single <laughs> person, but like he looks like every Gen Z's dream boy. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Skinny, like pale vampire boy. <laughs> Slightly <laughs> feral, messy hair. <laughs> yeah. Okay, who's next? Does the figure look chained up, or does it? Or can I not see from this distance? Uh, you can't see. No. Who's next? Gonna move so that other uh, I will go down. Okay. I will. Yeah. After that, I'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Last. Oh, I've moved. There you go. And as Zenicus is doing like the the whispers thing go. up the Shoop. up the conga line, saying, 
Close the gate. Close the gate. Hi, welcome to Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Craig is gonna pull the the door down behind him. Okay. Now, you will see the same scene. These rotten wooden columns straining to hold the weight of the building above and huddled in the far corner a gaunt figure um I shall like I'm gonna lean to Xanta and be like um do you do you usually do last rites when you help people on your way or do you wanna say a In few a way. Does it look like he is aware of our presence? Or is his mind completely somewhere else? Um nope, yeah he does seem to be. He's like cowering in the corner, like trying to push himself against the wall as far as possible away from you. I'd like to walk towards him. Yeah, and please making sure that I keep in front of uh, everyone everyone move as you are. That's I'm gonna just He's sort of like show Xenicus where I kind of wanna go. Yeah. yeah. This is where I wanna be. Ish. Is he moving away? He's trying to. Oh Stop. So, Xenicus moves to cut him cut him off. Doris. <sighs> Stay calm. We're here to help. I'm so hungry. I can... I can smell your blood. And he turns, and with that hiss, scutters up the wall behind him, and Spider climbs up onto the roof with his head turned to look at you, and he scuttles scuttles across the roof above you. (laughs) What do you do? Like chasing after him, like trying to like, ugh, like jump and swipe. <laughs> okay, we need some initiative, I think. <laughs> Fuck. Real bad. <laughs> so low. I am cleric. So, this sudden movement shocks you all as he clambers up. What are we doing here? Okay. Let's make this visible for everyone as well. Ah, there you go. There you go. Oh, easy, easy. All right. Push. Asara. Leaps into action. Short bow. Okay. Ooh, I got a twenty-four. <laughs> That'll definitely hit. The damage is nine piercing. Nine piercing, eh? Okay. So yes, you you quickly react to the sudden movements and pull your bow ready to um, ready to shoot at this monster as it clambers across the ceiling um, and you flash your arrow out and it streaks through the air and, and hits him square but he doesn't seem to react as strongly as you'd hope but the arrow does cause some damage Okay. Any anything? Any movement or anything? Uh, can so on mine, I can't really see where. Oh, never mind. My, one of my little icons was blocking him perfectly. Now I can see. Where gotcha. Um, no, I'm gonna stay where I'm at. Yep. Okay. Um. He. Um, is going to. 
Let's see here. Okay. His eyes, like, flash around wildly at all of you, settling on Krig. And he's like, <sighs> I've never tasted your kind. And he drops from the ceiling onto Krig and attacks. Hey, hey. Does... How do we go here? Does a 14 hit? It just misses. Just misses. Okay. <laughs> um, he, um, yeah, he tries to lash out as he drops down, but uh, misjudges um, your um, ability to move out of the way, and you dodge the blow. Um, and he he tries again to slash out at you with his claws. Uh, Twelve. So uh, yeah, you kind of quickly backtrack away and, and manage to avoid the claws. He drops down on all floors, on all fours, um, almost like an animal, and he's like just hissing at you and like looking around at all of you. And um, he's going to actually, um, he's actually going to back away from you if you want to take a, an opportunity attack. Yes, I will. Okay. That's a 24. That hits. Of course, that's Craig. Craig the Nibberman. <laughs> Craig True Eye. Uh, 11 damage. 11 damage. Okay, again. Um, you quickly... you Fire, yes? Is this with your bow or sword? Yes, longbow. Okay. Um, you you quickly draw an arrow as you're so accustomed to and so so slick at doing and fire and it thuds um, you know into his arm but he just pulls it out and throws it to the side. Again, not looking as damaged as you would hope. Okay. Um, he then scuttles across the floor, spider-like, and huddles in this corner with his back to the corner. Xenicus. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to try and, like, at first I'm going to, like, he's running because it's moves away, he's like running because he thinks he's running for the, uh, the stairway. Uh -huh. So he thinks he's running to get out. When he realizes he's huddling in the corner, he's going to like dive down and just, as he's running, like his sword, he kind of cuts against his hands. And the, again, the, the, as the blood kind of goes through the sword, the lightning comes through the sword. Okay. And he just kind of continues that action up and just slashes him through okay. the, uh, the corner. And we'll pull this again. He did last time he did <laughs> First, I need to take a few Yes. Yeah. Great. Go four. So, what was that, sorry? I, I, no, I, I took four that. Nice. Yeah. That is... Uh, 24 to hit. That'll hit. So, that is eight piercing mm -hmm. and three lightning damage. Okay. With the silvered sword, if that matters. Um, it does not, it seems. Um, is the lightning magical? Um, I guess. I think all lightning is generally magical. Um, right, yes, it's produced by magic, isn't it? So, um, yeah. so can you give me those numbers again, please? It was eight piercing yes. and three lightning. Okay. So, um, yes, the thrust of your sword doesn't seem as effective as you would hope, but the lightning, um, you know, shocks him, and he's like, he like cowers in the corner and hisses at you. Anything else? Uh, my bonus action, my movement, and my action, so that's be done. Okay. Creek. Kind of lock him. Ah. Yes, Vanda? No. Okay. Oh, sorry, I thought it was my go. Not yet. You're next. Before, Krig was taking a, a, a opportunity attack before. 
Yes, Greg. So the, the first thing that Greg is going to do is uh, he's going to cast Hunter's Mark on uh, yeah. Shoru. Okay. Um, so, like, his, his eyes get bigger and uh, kind of, like, flash a little bit. And uh, like, nobody else can see it. Uh, but, like, one of my little bugs has, is like has made its way around and is kind of like flashing around his head. Okay. Um, sitting on his forehead and creating a target light. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm also going to use a bonus action to agitate the swarm. Okay. Um, so basically for a minute um, I can add my little base spirit bugs uh, to my attacks. Okay. Um, Is that ranged they, attacks as well? Uh, yeah, they follow my weapon. I uh, see. Ranged for uh, melee. Okay. And um, it's they add like 1d6 force damage. Okay. Um, um, and uh, that's going to be Briggs' turn. I see. Thank you. Setting up for future big Lady Vanta. So I am going to cast spiritual weapon. Ooh. Wow! Here it comes. What does it yes. look like? So what I do is seeing that um, the weapon attacks aren't quite doing as well as people hope. Yes. I pull my crossbow, and as I pull my crossbow um, from my back, these just two black sort of spectral wings kind of wrap around. You can just about see through them as though they're made of like a dark kind of shadow, and they're sort of like they're almost moving as though fluttering, like shaking their feathers just a little bit. And I'm going to do a crossbow attack at it and when I fire off the bolt as it's heading, speeding towards the target, in mid-air you see it turn into what looks to be a raven bolting forwards, where the point of the arrow once was is a beak, and hopefully it'll hit! <laughs> <laughs> so... So your spiritual weapon is up hitting them with a beak. But... Yeah, 17 plus 3, 30 plus That'll work. So it's six made into three because I'm assuming it's half damage. Um, so the it's weapon. Magic damage. No, it's magic, this so it's for okay. The crossbow, though. Oh, with, with no, the crossbow. No, because it's because it's the Wait. spiritual weapon, right? Yeah. Okay. It's just the spiritual weapon's damage, not the crossbow. Cool. So seven plus one. Um, it is total. Sorry. Oh, where did that spell go? Oh, I spot. I did that wrong. I'm sorry. Six plus one, and then plus two is oh my god, nine plus four. So it takes thirteen points of damage. Oof. Okay. So yeah, this um this raven um shoots forth and just buries home and just explodes in a burst of black feathers as the spiritual weapon. Now, the, the spiritual weapon stays there, right? Yep, it's just hovering behind me. Um, like ravens on a tree assembled in the shape of kind of like wings. I love the idea of you, like, you're just got, like an ensemble of ravens that just fire at your crossbow. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, yes, well, I mean, your spiritual weapon moves over there, attacks and stays there, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what kind of what I'm thinking is as like the, you can move it on your turn yes. if you want to, but because it's a ranged weapon, I'm just thinking of it going like with the arrow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is that okay, or is it not like that? I think. Or I, I think. I was for the first. I mean, for the initial, the initial attack, it can be fired from the crossbow, but then it, but it, it would, it wouldn't disappear. It would stay. No, no, of course, yeah. no. It's, it's still there. Yeah. I'm just saying that for flavor, it looks like mm -hmm. it's going with the arrows. It's, Absolutely, it's, yeah. It is just where it needs to, it's where it needs to be to hit. Yep. But, um, just because I thought it would be fun to Yeah, totally. Like, ravens. Yep. But, yeah. Yeah, so I, so I thought it sounded like you'd, you would, you'd call it back. I mean, you could, it has oh, movement, no, 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 so no. you could call it back as well. No, no, no. So 
uh -huh. what I'm imagining is that it's like a shadow and mm -hmm. it can have like t like tendrils or whatever, like of like feathery, raveny thing. Yes, it's, yes. It's just the flavor, just the flavor. It doesn't yeah. have to. Okay, so it's like it's like flapping yeah. its wings, like over, like hovering over him menacingly now. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Having having been launched from this crossbow, and find you know hitting home with this that devastating hit. Thank you. Okay. Um, any movement? Um, let me look. Asara, you're next. Yeah. Just like, yes. Can I get there? Yep, Just absolutely. Just in my line of sight in case he moves anywhere. Sure. Yeah, here, here. Okay, Asara, please. Um, I don't have any magic or anything, so it's maybe short bow again. Okay. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, can I cast my dancing lights? And have them surround him. Does that have any effect? Mm. When I cast him. I mean, it would make things just you know more illuminated and clearer to see. Okay. He wouldn't hate it. Then I don't care about it. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do. Only sunlight specifically. That's gonna be an 18 to hit. That hits. And it will be five. Okay, thank you. So yeah, your arrow grazes his arm and he hisses in pain um, as he uh, shies away from the attack. Any movement? Um... Uh, no. No, I'm gonna stay by Krieg. Okay. I'm scared for him because the guy doesn't like him. Okay, now, Zenicus. As you're standing over this um, this figure, um, in that in that proximity you have there, you see as he kind of like bunches himself up, ready to attack again. Some of the wounds that have been inflicted by you and your friends start to close, and he seems to be able to heal himself somewhat. Um, and he seems to regenerate somewhat, um, and then he lashes out towards you. 22? Yeah, that hits. Okay. He springs up unnaturally fast from the floor, and his claws flash out, and you brace yourself for the pain that's going to come, but instead, these surprisingly strong hands for such a small, gaunt figure, grip you. One of them in your shoulder, the other, the claws worming up through your hair as he yanks your head back and has you grappled. And he's like, I've been so hungry. <laughs> and he bites down towards your neck. <laughs> And that is a 23 <laughs> to hit. Yeah, that definitely hits. And that is 8 piercing damage. Sorry, what was that? 8 piercing damage. Mm -hmm. Plus, as you feel the teeth sink into your neck, there's a very unpleasant sensation from the wound, and you take 3 necrotic damage. As you feel your life force drained and you lose those three from your maximum. Oh shit. Oh, that's crap. And you see him throw his head back, he's like <sighs> and he seems somewhat rejuvenated by the flow of blood after so long dripping from his teeth. I'm still, like, grappled, yeah? You are. <laughs> so, Xenicus is grappled, held by the shoulder and hair of this creature, and you've seen him be bitten in the same way you'd been so worried about Arena being bitten. Um, let's see, what's a good grappled one? Could you uh, find one for me, Mike? Yeah, sure. Cheers. Get an icon on you there. 
Um, and he just stays there, grappling, grappling Xenicus. And Xenicus, it is your turn. Now, grappled is quickly here. Um, your speed is zero. Um, you are incapacitated, so you can't take actions or reactions. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, no. It ends if you're incapacitated. So, sorry, ignore that. Your speed is zero. And um, you have the chance to escape. Uh, yes. So, what's going to happen mm -hmm. is that as he's grappling, he bites down. And, uh, like, uh, just after the bite down, as if he's going to pull his head back as if he's about to bite another time. Yes. And all of a sudden, as he's moved forward to kind of bite in again, mm -hmm. he just gets like every green leaves just everywhere. Yes. Because I'm not there anymore. Ah. <laughs> uh... Oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I face that out. <laughs> and behind him. <laughs> and right in the back of his neck. Personal kid. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was trying to remember what that quote was. I couldn't remember. Uh, that's a personal kid. Oh, that's a... What's... What's this? Uh... Fifteen? Uh, that hits. Oh. Just... Okay. Uh, Krig, you're up next. That's... Five piercing with the sword plus. Uh, not sorry, five piercing, five plus six. Uh, Eleven piercing with the sword and two lightning. Um, Eleven piercing and two lightning. Thank you. Um, okay, so yes, you get your revenge. You lash back out at him. Anything else? Um, other than the glorious evergreen leaves that have, <laughs> yes. have appeared all over the floor. Just cascading everywhere, yes. Okay, thank you. I think you. if it had been next to me, I could have taken them with me. <laughs> but there was no, no allies next to me. That's fine. Okay, Greg. Okay, um, so Hunter's Mark active. Yes. Uh, and uh, the swarm is agitated. Um, so I'm gonna, like, Krig knocks an arrow. Okay. And, um, like, at the head of it, it looks like um like a swarm of atlas beetles those are the ones that have like three horns okay um and uh he's going to take a shot how'd you go uh 13 i misses i'm afraid just still unaccustomed to working with these f strange fey creatures that have been called to you. Some of them swirl up into your vision and the, in the darkness of the undercroft here, your, the light kind of dazzles you and you, uh, you miss and your arrow thuds solidly into the stone, into the, sorry, into the wooden um, side of the stairway there. Anything else? Ah, get away. Uh, nope. That's it. Okay. Um, actually, I should... Yes, yes, Doru. Shush. <laughs> okay, here you are, Vanta. Let me give you a, a little raven for your spiritual weapon. Wow. Wow. Ah. Wow. Cool. What is happening? Ah. <laughs> Okay, he's there next to next to Doru. Okay, any move? No movement there, Crick. You okay? Yep, I'm gonna stay right here. Okay, Lady Vanta. Cool. So now um, Zenicus was just got when he, but he's probably fine for now. That's my thought. <laughs> so. For now. Cool. So I would like to do exactly what I did before. Ooh, unless. 
unless... Yes? So, I have a question about my spiritual weapon. Yes? I can, as a bonus action... Wait, Move I have it. to use it when I make a weapon attack. Is that correct? Isn't, it, that it, isn't your spiritual weapon's attack a weapon? So, what I'm asking is, can I use it in conjunction with a spell, or does it have to be with a weapon? No, your your bonus action is to move it and attack with it. Yeah, but um, okay, so I can use it. I can use it in conjunction with a spell. So I can cast um, a spell. Yes, and you then can. On my bonus action, I can sweat. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Yep. I'm going to do inflict wounds. <laughs> <laughs> ouchie, ouchie, I would ouchie. like to mm. cast inflict wounds okay, okay. at first level. What's the DDL? Do we begin the whole Do we oh, get safe? I need to make a. Melee spell attack. Oh, I have to touch Melee. it. Okay, oh, in I go. Okay. Uh -oh. One, wait. One, two, three, four. Boom. Touch. Melee. <laughs> 18 right. plus 6, 24. You haven't moved for me, but <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Oh, oh there you go. Okay, um, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Yep. That hits. So, cool. You take 3d10 damage. Ow. And then I'm going to roll for the ball, the, the thing that I have. The thing. The weapon. The, mm -hmm. the raven. The raven. Quoth the raven. <laughs> name is the oh! raven. Quoth the raven, it's die fool. Good. Nine plus nine is eighteen. Plus wow. two is twenty-one. Ouch. Twenty-one points of necrotic damage. Okay. And then on top of that, I'm going to do my spiritual. Weapon, mm -hmm. melee spell attack. Mm -hmm. I don't know if all the spell cast, but better than me. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, this probably isn't gonna hit. What'd you get? Um, it's eleven. No, nah, misses. I'm afraid. So the raven, the raven kind of like lashes down and tries to peck out, um, peck out Doru's eyes, but misses. And but you land a blow, um, um, on him, and you feel the necrotic energy surge from you but um it was 21 yes necrotic yes 21. yes okay and you see him his eyes flash up and he's like <laughs> i'm already oh. mostly gone and he seems oh. to resist the necrotic damage somewhat ah, i hate you <laughs> i hate you but uh, i was actually expecting it to go worse and actually heal it so. <laughs> yeah. no, doesn't do that Anything else? No, it's fine. Okay. Um, I can't move because he will get me. So I'm, I'm trying. just gonna stand there. <laughs> okay. No, no, I'm, if I go out of the train, he gets me. Asara. Yes, we're gonna go short bow again. Let me, uh, um, sorry guys, can I, can I, do you mind if I do that quick thing again where we just quickly um, yes. duck out and duck back in so we can keep the VOD on Twitch? Sure, I can't go on for too much longer. <laughs> sorry, Sneaky Rogue Thief. Aileen! Aileen! Hi! <laughs> I keep, I keep, ter we keep terrifying I them with the, uh, with the uh, Doru screech. <laughs> it is nasty. Um, stay with us. We are going to duck out and come immediately back. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> into the thick of things. Hello cool. to you too. <laughs> nice to have you here. Thank you. Um, okay, so that 16. is an attack. You hit with a 16 with your shot? Yep. Okay. That hits. It's getting kind of crowded down there. Watch out. And it's going to do 8 piercing. Oh, right. Thank you. Um, 
and yeah, that shot thuds into his uh, into his thigh. And he's like <sighs> and he angrily, kind of tears it out and throws the arrow to the side. Any movement? Nope. Okay. Does it feel like we're doing more damage than it was recovering? Yes. Okay, at least that, we've got that. But you, again, as it comes to his turn, you do see the wounds start to um, start to close, and that the, that discoloration from the necrotic damage starts to fade somewhat. And as he turns and he looks at you, Vanter, and he's like, ah, "Full course," and ah, like goes out towards you. Um, does a eight hit? <laughs> Oh, to me? Yes. No, I assume. <laughs> Sorry, I win. It was a rhetorical question. It's okay. It's only an eight. I have 17 armor class. Oh, jeez. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Clang. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. He um, fights metal. 21. <laughs> oh, Not the second yeah, time. No. Okay. That so that second, um, second time he, um, he grabs you. And again, same as with your friend um, Zinicus, he uh -huh. grabs you by the shoulder and starts to pull your head back and bare your neck. Cool. And you are grappled. Join but... the vampire club. <laughs> um, Zinicus, your turn. Oh, it didn't actually bite yet. Oh, you good. can't, no. Unfortunately. Ah, uh, because he got me in the first one. Yeah, he grappled. got you the first one and bit with the second, yeah. Uh, then Zinicus is like. Trying to like slap, like pierce into it as quickly as possible, trying to like kind of like pull them off, kind of thing, like just hoping to get like stab at the arm. Yep, yep, yep. Go for it. Yeah, off Vanda. Nat 20! Oh, yeah! That'll do it. Good job, okay. Nice. Good job. So the. Oh! I wish I had the camera here to show you guys. Can you show me the class? Because it's max damage. <laughs> Dies. <laughs> Get it. So that's uh, is it just is it all of it doubled? Remember, Did it's 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 a max attack plus a dice roll. Okay, so yep. it's uh, the max attack would be well, it's actually so it's just doubled then because I got the max okay. on both the dice. So, so double it, double uh, the dice plus the modifier. So it, it's um, double the dice plus five. So it's twelve plus four piercing. Okay. And then eight lightning. Okay, so that is um, twelve piercing. You said, yeah. Uh, twelve plus. Uh, sorry, twelve plus six. So, because six, six on the die twice, which is twelve yep. plus the the normal plus on okay. the fire six. Okay, so eighteen. That's reduced to nine. But then the eight lightning. You said eight lightning. Yes, because okay. it's four on the die. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so seventeen damage total. As you lash out, and the lightning courses through your blade and yeah. cuts into him. Similar rage fill that he was that last time the the death house. He's just like hacking and slashing rage mm -hmm. fill, trying to get rid this thing off Vanta as quickly as possible. Yep, yep. Okay. Anything else? Krieg, you're up next. And I'm done. Sorry. You done? Okay. So Krieg. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of steps over. Here. Yes. Um, while Goru is grappling Vanta, is the does that affect attack rolls on him? Um, he has half cover. Yes. Okay. Oh, cool. Well, I have sharpshooter, so he doesn't. But. Ha. Uh, <laughs> so, it is. Okay. I was just curious if maybe I got like advantage on it or something. Like, yeah, nice. I guess it's like struggling around. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Is that uh, thing? So is that thing you know, you see in all the movies, like you know, when the the uh, the person's got the person in front of them as a human shield, and the person's like aiming, waiting just for they pop out from behind them. <laughs> Go. All right. Uh, that's a nat twenty. Oh uh, god, damn it! <laughs> you just can't just right. leave me to have something, can you? Just oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um. It's twenty eight. The yeah, so that's a twenty-eight fully to hit, um, and so the damage. This rolled. is on your this is on your bow, yes. Uh, long bow, yeah. Yeah. So what you do um, is, excuse me, 
Um, what's the dice for the uh, Hunter's Mark? Uh, 1d6. Okay, so that is a total of 18. 18 plus a d8 and a d6. 18. And that is form damage as well. I defeated people. Yeah, so that's another d6. Oh, okay, well. Uh, so that's one plus six, so seven plus, what is that, another d6. So I'm just going to roll that again. Two. So 18 plus nine is 27. Yep. How much is how much is from the um, swarm? That is it's only 2 force damage. Okay. So um so it was 27 uh, non magical. Yeah, yes. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, As Asara this arrow goes whistling past your head with these these buzzing face spirits. You know, buzzing along beside, and it thuds into Doru, and these bugs are all like, you know, like, like bur trying to burrow into him and attacking him as well, and biting him. Okay, anything else, Greg? And you're up next, Vanta. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. Go, Vanta. Okay. Go, Vanta. It's your birthday. Um, cool. No, it's I'm not. Going to try and it's birthday. I'm gonna try and escape the grapple. Okay. Ugh. How did they do? <laughs> you can use use your you can use your athletics or yeah. um what's yeah. it? Yeah, acrobatics. Um, yeah, I rolled a twelve. Which is not enough, I'm afraid. You are still oh, grappled. Yeah. Oh no! Any movement? I'm grappled. I'm, I'm grappled, I can't move. Uh, that's true, yes of course, excuse me. Um, okay, Asara. I'm gonna duck behind a, this pillar here and hide. Is hiding, is that a free action? That's a bonus. So it's a bonus action for you. Action. Okay. John, sorry, can Hello. I, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, my spiritual weapon isn't grappled, is it? So no. Nope. Can, can it still attack as a bonus? It can, yes. Yeah! Uh, no, I rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's just kind of peck. As I said earlier, a roller, roller coaster ride. <laughs> the, the bird's too worried for you. Stride. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so yes, sorry, you were saying. I'm gonna hide behind this pillar. Okay, give me a um, stealth check. Yes. That is going to be a 16. An 18, okay. You feel fairly hidden. I am secret shadow. Um, and I am going to once again do my short bow. Okay. So that that gives it advantage, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing it did. That's a sixteen. That just hits. Nice. And I oh, actually. Um, mm. No, I'm sorry, no, because Vanta's still grappled. That's actually, yeah, with the cover. Um, yeah, you, you actually, um, he swings Vanta around just as you loose, and you kind of jerk the bow, and uh, it brings it up so it doesn't hit Vanta. But the misses, I'm afraid. And I stay hidden. Ah, uh, no, you reveal yourself with the attack. Oh, You'd okay. have to go again next time. Okay, then I, I stay not hidden. <laughs> okay, doke. Thank you. Running around the room trying to find a cursing pillow to hide behind. Okay. Vanta. Wow. It's me and my Chomp. Day. Ah, only 15. Ha! Okay. I have a 17 armor class. Ah, you managed to pull your head away, and he's like, no. uh, I must like feed. No. I must feed. 24. <laughs> okay, and you feel as you, you manage to pull away and you feel ha success as you manage to avoid the first bites, but then you feel the two pinpricks pierce your 
neck and right the jugular. you feel the blood drawn from your skin as you take eight piercing damage yes i do five necrotic damage oh. and your max is reduced by five <laughs> cool and he looks rejuvenated somewhat by that and he like nice. pulls his head back and the blood kind of sprays off and he's like <sighs> And he slowly licks his fangs. Okay. And... Zinnicus. Now, does he look rough? Hmm, yes. Does... Phantom look rough? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's not looking like on death's door, but she's looking like one more hit might get her there. Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. Oi, oi, oi. Yeah, okay. Then Zinnika drops his weapon. Vanta, you hear a clatter as the sword drops to the floor. And, like, because he was just rage-filled attacking this thing, he drops his weapon. And suddenly you hear bones breaking. Oh, Constant lots of bones breaking. And everyone suddenly just sees him grow and... <laughs> as he... <laughs> And he's going to wall into this fucker with his giant werewolf claws. Would you like to change your token? Uh, yeah. Fucking stop it! You're a werewolf! I, this one only doesn't have them. This one only has the human forms. His token. Really? Yeah. Newts. What a good secret. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I've worn wolf t-shirts every bloody session. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, thing. that's really very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry man, I don't have it. I'll, I'll get it next time. Oh, okay. okay. My bad. Mm, sorry. Um, but, yes, so, giant werewolf uh, claw attacks. So, uh, give me a second, it's the first time using this ability, so changing it's a bit of a pain. Actually, yeah, dude, I never even got the um, arts to make tokens. I had to send it to you. I've got it all for you. I mean, I got, I got the, um, I got the various um, elf ones, but not the, uh, not the wolf yeah, ones. They were all emailed to you, because I remember like going down and looking them on your computer. But I can send them again. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, my bad. Okay, so yes, you see Zinnicus form grow and shift and change. And is that, is that, how much does your turn does that take action. up? Bonus action, okay. Yeah, bonus action to do that. Uh, so. No, I just want to double check this is the first time using it. I only get one claw attack the first time because to attack two handed with both claws it's a bonus action to like two, hand two weapon fighting. There you go. Rah. <laughs> That's uh. 21. That hits. And... Ooh, that's uh. and then 11 slashing. It'll feel like it's weaker at first. But it does, it'll get better next turn. <laughs> so, oh, because the lightning was on the sword, so I don't yeah, have yeah. that right now. Okay, it's so eleven slashing. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, your claws lash out and scrape across it. You see Dora just like screeches in fear. He's like, ha! This huge thing just looms over him. He, I, th I think he's like, cries out. He's like, Master, why? <laughs> 
<laughs> um, Krig, what do you do? <laughs> Two targets. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> um, like, kind of, like, visibly shaken at, like, what he just saw happen. Like, he's gonna look at Xenicus werewolf form and then, like, snap out of it and, like, seeing Goru and Vanta, like, struggling and he's gonna take another shot. Okay, go for it. That hits. What's the damage? Oh, hold on. Seven plus... Seven piercing? Uh, so nine piercing. Okay. And five force damage. Okay. Your arrow just like buries itself in his shoulder and and the bugs are all just like biting at him and like just like worrying him and um, he just yeah he looks in a really bad way. He's like no 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 Anything else? I'll be me. Okay. Lady Banta. Oh, sorry, next. Uh, yes. I would like to attempt to attack my spiritual weapon first. Yep. 15 plus 6, 21. That hits. Yay! Birds! <laughs> attack! <laughs> ah! Ooh, 12! Nice. Cool, 12 plus... Um, sorry, I shouldn't have looked at the spiritual weapon. 12 plus 4, 16 points of damage. Oof. Looks <laughs> very, um, very bad. Um... I would like to. Well, oh, do I want to try and get. You don't, you don't have disadvantage or anything. I know. I'm just, I'm just trying to think what's the best route for me in this one moment. I'm going to try and escape the grapple. I'm going to try and do it again. Okay. Oh. That's really bad. Yeah, it's nine. Cool! It's a hug party! <laughs> right to the hugula! Everybody hug <laughs> Um yeah, he manages he manages to keep hold of you tight even even as he's cowering away from this giant wolf like figure. I was tossing up between escaping and he healing myself. <laughs> I should escaping. Oh well, that's fine. Asara, what do you do? I will, having seen Xenicus become a furry hulk, I will yell <laughs> out, um, you're not a spy, are you? And then dip behind a pillar uh -huh. <laughs> um, to hide. Okay. Give that stealth check. That's going to be a 21. Okay. He loses sight um, of you. And... Attack with my short bow once again. Oh, nice! I got 23 to hit. No hits, and that's gonna be oh, nice 10 piercing damage, and I get an extra 2d6. That's gonna be uh, 17. Okay. So, um, yes, sorry, you, you managed to um, duck behind um, some of these. I'll say you're like moving around a bit more. I think, I think you'd have to like change cover each time. You can't just like, you know, <laughs> just stand behind the same pillar and become visible and then disappear again. Um, so I think you're like, moving around, shifting between the pillars in the back there, and he's distracted by everything right in front of him, trying to, trying to get one more uh, bite in and to try and restore himself. And um, you, you pirouette behind one of those pillars and spin out the other side dropping to one knee and you let loose your arrow and it streaks forward and Vanta's spiritual weapon raven is there with its wings flapped out wide 
and just as your arrow streaks forward, it beats its wings and rises up, revealing Doru's face, and your arrow just goes Froom! between his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and Vanta's spiritual weapon, Raven, settles down again, but this time, with its wings splayed, it settles on Doru's chest. And you see the blackness of its feathers sink into the vampire spawn and spread out. And the vampire spawn starts to kick and writhe around and hiss and scream. And as it finally collapses down onto the clay and earth floor, you find yourselves alone in the Undercroft. Oh boy. So, so what, what's left of it? There's nothing? No, the body's there. It's just it, just this, this um, raven went. Seneca's ripped the head off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Seneca's just like, right, rolls the head off, smashes it into... <laughs> just making sure. All of you. I am going how to do you, how do you react? It. Yes. I'm going to wriggle out from underneath it because I'm still grappled. <laughs> Where I was. Oh, for now, the image isn't important if you're not sure what you're seeing. Make sure the token and everything's set up next. Um. All right. Craig is like um. very cautiously, like not moving. Like just kind of watching. Hey, uh, Zenithus? Like, he's kind of like he's kind of trying to like come out of that bloodlust of like just smashing that thing, and he's kind of he's looking at everyone, and he's this is, the the werewolf is looking as apprehensive as a big, massive, scary werewolf can. <laughs> Um, like, he's still got his leather armor on and everything. Like, it's still all over. Like, it's still there. He's still full of gear and stuff. The shield was still, like, attached to his arm, but the claws were out. I'm gonna, uh, saunter over. Can I, can I read the apprehension? Do I have to roll for that, or can I see it? No, I think he's, if he says he's showing it yeah. clearly, yeah. That's yeah. Fine. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna, like, put my short bow back and be like, I walk over and then like look up at him and be like, "So, are you a spy?" Saying it like jokingly because I don't think he is. <laughs> I'm gonna do an insight check. Yeah, um, he says no. Well, and actually, can I speak as a werewolf? I think so. Yeah. You tell me. Just, like, Sorry, I don't know. Then, uh, I I guess so. There's nothing that says that I can't. I'm gay. Now you need a werewolf voice, though. Oh, yeah, you can speak, use equipment, and wear armor in this form. There you go. So. No. <laughs> like, it kind of takes a step back from you. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Interaction. He's not going to be Scooby Doo. No, sorry. It's good. And I apologize if I, by accident, go into Scooby Doo. <laughs> <you're the> boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ruh -oh. Um, I got a. <laughs> For insight. You got a what? Sorry. I got a sixteen for insight. Unless, uh, yeah. unless he's trying to deceive you, you don't need to roll. It's okay. I was gonna say like because oh, okay. even if he Never was, mind. you would have you would have still got past it because he's terrible. At that <laughs> <stuff>. <laughs> With um, a sixteen. Yeah. Really sorry. I was. I, I have to. I'm going on holiday tomorrow, so yep. I really have to log yep. off. I'm going to go for forty minutes ago. But yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. And um, can maybe deal with this interact. Vanta is quietly watching you with staring wild eyes, but is also heaving on the floor and probably healing herself, and that's how she will end the evening. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Take care. You, uh, Have a good trip. Happy birthday, Steph. And, you. and to you soon as well, Emma. Um, so after Xenicus answers me, I'm going to be like, ah, well, good. Let's go. But maybe you should. Then I'm going to look him up and down. Like, 
and he just as soon as you, you say that he kind of like you just see like kind of like like understanding come his eye and then all of a sudden you just hear the most horrible crunching and bone break that like you know like those horror movies you just hear that <laughs> and like all these things and it like you just see him slowly turn out and he like as he lands he's like <laughs> and he kind of gets back up and grabs his sword as he does so Mm. My god. I apologize for that. That was I mean good. That that worked out pretty well for us, I think. <laughs> and then and then Craig vomits. <laughs> 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 Uh, and Xenicus has just stared at you guys, still terrified. I'm, like, very interested, but also aware of our time clock. So, now that he's back, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I am so excited to talk. But you can't tell if it's sinister <laughs> or, or not. It's like, it's... It feels, it feels menacing. She doesn't mean it that way, yeah. but it definitely, and she's like... Xenicus looks like a puppy who's got into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> this is too sweet. And then you, um, you're going to make your way back up top? I'm going to take a minute to... Uh, he probably doesn't have anything on him, but like any affects, letters, symbols, or anything that Doru had on his body... Um, you don't find anything, I'm afraid. That's what I thought, yeah. I was going to say that I left that symbol of the raven on top of the body, just in case. Okay. Because he doesn't know if that does anything or not, but he's just broken. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, and um, we'll head up, I guess. Yep. And then it gets his, at first, it kind of looks very kind of limpy, as if he's like not, like in pain, but it kind of like walks it off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, who's going for He's going first. still very wary. He's I'll definitely first. going first. Yeah. Zedekus is now definitely not first. <laughs> okay, who's next? Oh, hang on, sorry. I'm sorry. Who's next? Yeah. I'll go. And? I think Zedekus would let Vanta go next, like, and then would follow up behind. She, uh, she looks over her shoulder as, as you, uh, as you gesture for her to go ahead, and she's like, hmm. Interesting. That's my Emma. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> and, um, yep, yeah, you clamber up. And Asara was first creek, so if you want to step back a sec. Right. Asara, as you clamber up through the trap door and splash into the puddles of that room, you hear the front doors opening and the voices of Father Donovich and Ismark coming in. I'm gonna turn to everyone and be like... <laughs> <laughs> and no. you see yeah, Father, yeah, Father Donovich yeah, Father Donovich steps in and he's like, steps up to the door he's like, oh, why, why, why is this open? And he, and he, he comes and he sees all of you and like, I think at that point Xenicus and Vanta are just clambering up out of the trap door and he's like, no. No, what have, what have you done? What have you done? And Ismark, you just see Ismark's hand just like just clamps onto his shoulder, and he's like, Father Vodonovich, you know, there was no way to save him. Everything in your faith." insisted that that creature be sent to meet the mother of ravens and he's like but my son my and he just slowly collapses to the floor crying and ismark gentler on his shoulder now says your son Died three months ago, and I think Vanta would actually step up, and she's like, 
Yes. Don't worry. We sent your son to where he was supposed to be. Anyone else? Xenicus is just feeling very anxious now that remembering that in his werewolf form he ripped the head off. <laughs> Oops. And Ismark slowly helps the father to his feet and he kind of like shrugs out of it and pulls out of it and starts to shuffle back towards the altar at the head of the church. Maybe we should deal with the body. You hear him start to pray once more. Ismark says, My friends, thank you. You have made the village of Barovia for what it's worth somewhat of a safer place. Come on. Please, we must get back to Irina at once. I don't like that that servant of the devil was here. What did he say to you? Um, he gave, he said, his master sends his condolences. <laughs> like I'd want the condolences from that devil. <sighs> and he storms out the front doors. Do you follow? I'm going to, like, before, as he storms out the front door, I'm going to be like, you know, maybe we shouldn't leave this poor man's headless son in the basement. Following after what Zeneca said. Um, I think we should make sure he doesn't try and head back by himself. The road is treacherous. And I was also thinking, hoping that maybe Vanta would kind of maybe distract him long enough to deal with the. I think because Vanta would want to deal with the, the burial thing. Like. <laughs> Big start tap dancing. Let's get this body out of here. Are you actually going to go back and retrieve it? I am. I don't. And do what with it? <laughs> Uh, basically, like, like not, it. not leave the head just kind of crumpled up near, on, against the wall so the father has to go deal with that. Okay. Even, like, even if it's just put it in a bundle and, like, wrap it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Put it, yeah. Let's wrap it. We just wrap the body and put the head in the kind of right place. You and just wrap it. Are curtains anywhere? You clamber back down into the undercroft and down the stairs and round into that corner and find nothing but a somewhat sodden bundle of black feathers. <laughs> Problem solved? Nervous laughter? <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm gonna go back up the stairs. Let's get out of here. Yeah. But there's like a quick shuffle back out. <laughs> okay. Spooky spook. And you all quickly clamber back up and go out after Ismark. And he's waiting by the gate. He's like, come on. We did the right thing. Yes, yes, we did. We did the right thing. And he steals himself and <laughs> determinedly walks south towards his house. And you all follow? Venicus muttering the right thing to himself as well. <laughs> the right thing, yes, the right thing. Yeah. Like, kind of like, sadly, sadly saying the right thing. Craig <laughs> is going to uh, start flying and match uh, his mark speed and up from him and just say, I, what it's worth, I I think that was the only thing to be done. What do you know? You're only 12 years old. 
I'm 16. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> okay. And as you all talk amongst yourselves, thinking back on what's happened this day, this morning, still fairly early in the morning here, and I say mid morning now with the ceremony and everything, and following his mark back towards to check on Arena, our view rises up from the church back outside. And as the rain falls on the dilapidated church and the mist enshrouded graveyard, from our vantage point up above the church here, we see two shadows detach from the shadows amongst the graves and slip quietly over to the side of the church. As you see these two figures. Ew. Make their way quickly between the graves to the walls of the church. Reaching the stonework, they glimpse through the windows, their faces briefly illuminated, deathly pale, tattooed, pierced, their dark leather outfits, glinting with the rain on them in the candlelight from the windows. They look at one another, nod, and there's a swirl of black smoke and black feathers as both of them appear inside the church. The priest looks up surprised by the sudden appearance but then his eyes go accepting <sighs> so the mother of ravens sends a pair of her black wings the larger of the two steps forward. Yes. You knew this was coming. Allowing that abomination, that affront to the Raven Queen, to live here. And Father Donovich's head just sags. Yes, I knew. I knew you would come. Well, we are here. And you see Father Donovich stand shakily to his feet, take the bell pull rope in his hands, slowly wrap it around his neck. And as our view pulls outside the church into the mist and rain, we hear a final and we shall stop there. Oh, grim. For the later, good. Happy birthday, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday.
Yeah. Guess technically, technically, you're not your birthday anymore. <laughs> In the States, it's still my birthday. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Work those time zones. Work those time zones. Okay. The best thing about a traveler, you get to your birthday gets to be as long as you need it to be. Now, <laughs> as I would have said if Emma was still with us, unfortunately, she would have to watch the uh, the vod of this. Um, these are the two she saw slipping through in her dream. Um, but none of the characters know that. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So thank you, everybody. And we'll have to do that little bombshell that I dropped. And I completely worked what I wanted to do. <laughs> I was so excited about being a werewolf, I actually forgot that I was supposed to try and pull it off that Vanta and use my now enhanced strength. <laughs> but I got so excited and forgot to do that. I was so hoping that she would she would get that final blow as the as the 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 you know the working for the Raven Queen. It had it had one hit point left, and she's like, "No, I'm going to escape." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Oh, killing it. <laughs> but thank you, everybody. Really yeah, it was awesome. Sorry about the token. I I, I was I was yeah, so, no, so no, certain no, in my head that I'd done it already. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's just the, I thought we had got it all first. I wasn't thinking mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. I thought it was already on the one that we had, so I, it didn't even occur to me. Right. Yeah. Thank you, okay. guys. You too. Take Thank care. You. Have a great week. Bye. 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 <laughs>